Hi, I'm Mohamed Moti from the Sorbonne University in Saint Antoine Hospital in Paris. And I've been asked today uh, to give a sort of an overview about the uh, hottest uh, myeloma uh, data and their impact on the future uh, clinical practice. Uh, well, what I can say that uh, uh, during this ASH 2021 annual meeting in uh, Atlanta, it was a hybrid meeting, very exciting uh, meeting. Uh, we had 4,140 abstracts being presented, either oral sessions or posters. Among these 4,140 abstracts, we have 879 abstracts dedicated to multiple myeloma. So as you can see, uh, among the whole hematology field, whether malignant hematology, benign hematology, multiple myeloma by itself as a single disease is occupying 20 or 25 percent of the whole communication at ASH meeting. So this clearly highlights the excitement, but also the major advances we are seeing in this disease. And the natural history of myeloma is uh, definitely uh, changing, and the treatment landscape is being revolution revolutionized uh, progressively. So it can take me hours and hours uh, to go through, you know, the 800 plus uh, abstract. So uh, I may, I'll maybe focus on uh, three aspects. First of all, uh, MRD, measurable or minimal residual disease. It looks like, according to the data presented at this ASH 2021 meeting, that MRD is becoming now the uh, endpoint, the goal to achieve. MRD today is becoming what CR or even VGPR used to be uh, in the past. And actually, this is now something within reach. We have the uh, Griffin phase two randomized trial. We've seen an update about the results of this trial. This is a trial uh, testing uh, DARA VRD, DARA tumimab, borcasimab, lenalidomide, dexamethasone versus uh, VRD in the transplant setting. And uh, now with longer follow-up, we can see that not only DARA VRD is superior to VRD uh, in terms of stringency R, but also in terms of achieving MRD negativity. And this is uh, translating uh, towards now a trend of a PFS benefit, progression-free survival benefit, which wasn't seen at time of the initial uh, follow-up, at time of the blood paper publication about this trial. And we have also a similar uh, story in the uh, German multi multiple myeloma group HD7 trial, which was presented uh, for the first time during this meeting. And interestingly, this trial had MRD after induction as a primary endpoint. So a very a brave approach, I would say. And in this trial, uh, the authors, the investigators, uh, uh, led by Dr. Goldschmidt and colleagues, uh, tested the combination of VRD and isetuximab uh, which is another anti-CD38 uh, monoclonal antibody versus VRD. And the primary endpoint was met with more than 50% MRD negativity after induction. And the hazard ratio is in favor at 1.8 versus VRD. And of course, uh, the uh, speculation, the expectation is that if we are able uh, to achieve sustained uh, MRD in these patients, this is going to translate towards a longer uh, survival and long-term uh, outcome. Last but not least, we've seen uh, the update of the master trial. 
So this is uh, about the use of uh, daratumumab and KRD, carfizumib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, uh, very uh, strong, uh, potent uh, uh, combination, quadruplet combination. And here, uh, and of course, I'll not go into the details because now the paper has just been published a few uh, hours ago in the Journal of Clinical uh, Oncology. Uh, it was about uh, guiding uh, the treatment uh, through MRD. And uh, again, what is really uh, very important is about in patient with MRD negativity, whether we can stop treatment. And we know that for the patient, uh, uh, discontinuing the treatment and having uh, some long treatment free interval is crucial for the quality of life, but also from a pharmacoeconomic perspective. And this master trial, which has been masterly uh, done, performed by Dr. Costa uh, and colleagues for the so-called COMMIT consortium uh, in the United States, has clearly established the proof of concept. When you use such a potent combination uh, with transplant, for instance, you can uh, push the boundaries of MRD negativity beyond 80%. Uh, so lots of excitement about MRD, the use of quadruplet, and it is likely, in my opinion, that uh, some a significant proportion of these patients will be cured uh, in uh, the long term. The other two uh, major topics which uh, were crucial, uh, in my opinion, uh, during uh, this annual meeting were about the bispecific uh, antibodies, but also, again, the CAR T cells. And now we have a huge uh, number of different uh, uh, bispecific uh, antibodies, T cell engages. So very smart way of immune therapy, trying to enhance, uh, to, 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 to use in vivo uh, the T cells to guide them into the tumor. So uh, we had updated presentations uh, about uh, uh, the uh, teclistamab, uh, bispecific antibody uh, targeting BCMA, uh, talketamab, uh, GPRC5D, uh, sevostamab, uh, uh, the uh, elranatamab, uh, uh, the regeneron uh, by specific antibodies. And it can take me hours to go through all of these details, but the key message is that uh, using these bispecific antibodies in a population which is uh, triple refractory, uh, more than five or six lines, a uh, median uh, of five or six lines of prior therapies, the response rate is above 60%. So the bar is now very high. Remember in the past when we used novel agent in relapse refractory multiple myeloma, the bar in terms of response was around 30%. Uh, now the bar is higher, around 60%. And another key message is that when it comes to the safety profile, especially as a cytokine release syndrome, the incidence is quite high, but actually these are mainly grade one uh, and two CRS. And for the time being, with the limitation of the relatively short follow-up, we don't see uh, major safety signals. And of course, uh, these are very easy to use. They are off the shelf. Uh, and uh, my best guess is now to move these bispecific antibodies into earlier lines, but also in combinations with other drugs. And we've seen also already during the SASH 2021 uh, combinations of talketamab with daratumumab or teclistamab with uh, daratumumab uh, and so on. And uh, last but not least, when it comes to this uh, field of immune therapy, uh, we cannot skip the CAR T cells. And uh, I think uh, the biggest highlight uh, in the field of myeloma from ASH, in my opinion, is the uh, confirmation of the uh, longer follow-up of the results of the uh, CAR T cell construct, SILTA cell. So uh, Dr. Tom Martin 
uh, presented the update of the Cartitude 1 uh, results. And now we are talking in a relapse refractory population, uh, median of six lines of prior therapies. Uh, we're talking about more than two years of a PFS, median PFS. So really very impressive results. And uh, this is now paving uh, the way, I think, to uh, different trials uh, looking uh, into the use of CAR T cells in uh, different, in earlier disease stages. But why not uh, challenging the use of autologous stem cell transplantation as it has been done in lymphoma? And that was uh, another, I think, highlight of this ASH 2021 with the uh, Zuma 7 trial, the TRANSFORM trial, but also uh, the uh, Belinda uh, trial. But going back to CAR T cells in multiple myeloma, the progress continues there uh, because uh, we've seen further refinement of the BB2121 uh, construct, namely ID cell. Uh, this is uh, the BB2121-7. And uh, actually, with further refinement uh, of the quality of the immune effectors, when you generate the CAR T cell, you can further uh, improve the efficacy. And the results presented by Dr. Nupuraj were really uh, very good compared to the original uh, Karma data. Of course, we need to be uh, cautious uh, um, to and avoid comparing across trials, but I think definitely uh, these are important. We've seen also uh, uh, the use of gamma secretase inhibitors. And again, this is a most welcome uh, adjunction I would say, or combination with CAR T cells. And last but not least, I really liked the uh, presentation by our Spanish colleagues from Barcelona, uh, who actually uh, performed a study using an academic uh, autologous CAR T cells directed against BCMA. And the results are uh, also similar to what you achieve for instance, with the commercially available product ID cell. But uh, what's really interesting, it means also that uh, through a collaborative and academic efforts, you can also uh, allow uh, access to these uh, innovations. Uh, and uh, I believe this is extremely important because uh, on one hand, it is crucial uh, to make advances to improve the survival of these patients uh, and try to find the optimal combinations of the different available drugs and tools. But also, it is crucial to make all of these innovation, innovations and advances accessible, available, and affordable to the vast majority of myeloma patients across the globe. And I think the myeloma community is committed to achieve this goal. And uh, it is uh, really uh, a very uh, exciting uh, era uh, for all of us. And it's bringing a lot of hope uh, to patients and families.